Chapter Twelve of the Book of the Twelve Begins by Jean Van Ruysbroek, twelve ninety three to thirteen eighty one. This is a LibriVox recording, read in honor of the twelfth anniversary of LibriVox. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter Twelve showeth forth the third mode of true contemplation. Hereafter followeth the third mode which belongeth to the life of contemplation. This mode is called speculatio, that is to say, a seeing in a mirror. For indeed the understanding of him who is contemplating is as a living mirror, whereupon the Father and the Son breathe their spirit of truth, so that the reason may be enlightened, and may realize in modes, forms, images, and similitudes all truth that can be realized but to that mode whereby we see the face of god beyond and without reason in bare understanding and in thoughts stripped of all images neither consideration nor reasoning can attain for just as the eagle king of birds can with his powerful sight gaze steadfastly upon the brightness of the sun so do the weaker eyes of the bat fail and falter in the same the pure and single eye of the soul, uplifted beyond and without reason, in a bare and simple vision, seeth always the face of the Father, as do the angels who are our ministers, for it hath before it no other image than that of God himself. In that moment it beholdeth God, and all things, so far as they are one with God, in a simple scene, and therewith it is content, and the name thereof is contemplatio that is, the seeing of God in all simplicity. And so, in like manner, the intellectual power of the soul is a living mirror, wherein God dwelleth in grace, and whereto he hath given his spirit of truth. And by his light the eye of reason is enlightened, to recognize God and all his creatures in their forms and images and similitudes, so far as he is pleased to manifest them and the spirit of god commandeth the reason which it hath enlightened to order and govern the life of the senses after his law and the ordinances of his holy church in love and true discretion in the second place he who hath understanding and who hath received from god the spirit of truth shall walk before the face of our lord ruling and adorning his inward life with every virtue according to the beloved will of god and so may he hear the gentle voice of the Father speaking in his spirit, and saying, Look unto me, know me as I know thee, behold me from very close, what I am, and who I am. At this invitation the soul and all the inward powers rejoice, and she desireth at the urging and inviting of God to see with the eyes of her understanding opened and enlightened and then he showeth himself to the soul of the living mirror in her intelligence, not as he is in his nature, but in images and similitudes, and in the degree in which the enlightened reason can grasp and understand him. And the wise reason, enlightened by God, seeth clearly and without error in images of the understanding all that which she hath heard of God, of faith, and of all truth, according to her desiring but that image which is god himself although it is held before her she cannot comprehend for the eyes of her understanding must fail before that incomparable light yet because she is made wise by the spirit of truth so doth she see god in the images of her understanding as power truth justice goodness and mercy compassion, abundance, and loving kindness, living faithfulness, consolation, and sweetness. She seeth also the distinction of the persons, that each is God, and each alike almighty, in natural power, unity in trinity, and trinity in unity, in their nature fruitfulness, and in their essence pure repose, each person God, and the Godhead in their common substance. For the reason which is enlightened by the spirit of truth seeth God in her mirror in as many modes, forms, and images as she can imagine, 
and in all the ways that she desireth and now this power of the understanding is invited and urged by god to see what and who he is and therefore crieth the contemplating soul lord show us thy face above images and similitudes uncovered and unveiled so shall we be blessed indeed and it shall be sufficient for us and as the spirit of the lord answereth the enlightened reason and saith behold me who and what i am the eye of the understanding is strengthened to see all that it desireth whereto it hath been urged of god that simple eye with clear gaze in the divine light seeth plainly all that is god and followeth after him in her desire to know and to conceive therein what and who god is but before the face of our lord the reason with all her considerations and distinctions faileth and this power of the understanding is uplifted into that which is beyond all modes and its seeing is modeless being without manner and it is neither thus nor thus neither here nor there for that which hath no mode hath enveloped all and the vision is made high and wide it knoweth not itself where that is which it seeth and it cannot come thereat for its seeing is modeless and passeth on beyond for ever and without return that which it apprehendeth it cannot realize in full nor wholly attain for its apprehension is modeless and without manner and therefore is it apprehended of god in a higher way than it can apprehend him Lo such a following of the way which is modeless is intermediary between contemplation in images and similitudes of the understanding and unveiled contemplation beyond all images in the light of god end of chapter twelve of the book of the twelve begins by jean van roysbroek twelve ninety three to thirteen eighty one